So time to talk a little bit of football here on our game with myself, Jared Brown, and I'm delighted to be joined by former Galway footballer Barry, Barry Cullinan to look ahead to the last round of group games in the Galway Senior Football Championship this weekend. I suppose the standout game is a game that's been televised in TG Carter on Sunday. It's a game between two sides who are expected to go far in the competition and a down in Clare Galway, but one of these sides' journey will come to an end on Sunday. Barry, first of all, how are things with yourself? They're great, sir. Thanks for having me on and fair play to you for for uh, giving the coverage to the club game that is that it so well deserves. Yeah, it's great to have it back into its kind of I suppose its normal swing this this time of year. I suppose where last year obviously was a bit an exception when we played during the summer with COVID, but I suppose it's back to its normal slot and it's great to have to fill the winter months. And I mentioned a, a crunch game and what should be a tasty game on Sunday between two local neighbours as well, Anna Down and Claire Galway, obviously. But this would have been kind of few, maybe it's a bit of a group of death when you throw in the fact as well, Moy Cullen, the defending champions, are there as well. On Kaharu, they're obviously now out, but they gave a good account for themselves against Clare Galway. But both these sides ran Moy Cullen to win the point, but Anna Down had a bit more to spare against on Kaharu, beating them by 14 points, whereas Clare Galway uh, bet them by three points. But they did play most of that game with 14 men after losing Dara, uh, Dara Whelan. Yeah, and I think, you know, when the groups were drawn, and everyone looked at permutations. I think this was one that stood out like a sore thumb in that um, if if form was to go, if it was to go on form, um, and because Anna Down and Claire Galway avoided each other in the first two rounds, then it was, as I said, standing out that this could end up being being a real a real clash, and uh, you know, a, a, a match that's obviously going to be hugely important to both sets of management. And both sets of players, but you know, for those who don't know the, the geography of Galway very well, Claire Galway and Anna Down are they're literally they're they're joined at the hip. Um there's you know huge huge crossover between both clubs. Um, you know, to be some some of the Anna Down players, their postal code would be Claire Galway. You know, their parish would be Anna Down, but but their postal code would be Claire Galway. Uh, Damien Comer teaches in Clare Galway School. Loads of Dana Down lads who've gone to school in Clare Galway. Uh, so there's there's going to be a huge a huge rivalry between the two uh, the two teams on Sunday, and it's it's a very very difficult one to call. Um, but I think both teams will be delighted that they've given themselves a chance going down the home straight. And I think you know particularly for the Clare Galway management team having lost the amount of experience that they've lost over the last year. Danny Commons has gone to Australia, Sean Moore not playing this year, Conor Costello not playing this year, Stephen Kniff, Brian Dunahoo, two brilliant servants, they've retired. Um, I think the Clare Galway management would have felt that if they can get to the last game, still in with a shout, then then they'll be happy and they'll be going gun home for, for Sunday. Yeah, you mentioned there are some big names who are not with Clare Galway this year, obviously Danny Cummins. There's a lot of people who know former Galway footballer. He's no longer in the country. Sean Moore, another big name missing. He was part of that Galway under 21 winning team for 2013. But a lot of younger players kind of seem to be stepping up. We know the likes of Jack Lynn, who's now come from being the captain of the 20 team last year to burst onto the senior team this year. Connor Flatley, of course, balancing both codes and goals. And you even have other young players, the likes of Connor Campbell, Barry Goldrick, uh, Lorcan uh, Malloy, and uh, Padraig Cummings. They've already put their hands up in the first two games. Yeah, hugely. And and the average age, um, the average age of that Clare team is very, very low. I know they played um I think they played a league game against Sawtill this year and Barry Cannon, who's who's full back, who who incidentally plays full forward for Turlock Moore, I think he was the oldest player on the pitch, if not or the oldest player in the Clare Gower team, if if not the second oldest, and I'd say he's twenty two. Um, you know, so they're very, very young. But I saw them against my call and I, I couldn't get to the Caro game. And they were hugely impressive. Their 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 spirit, their work rate, their the intensity in their tackle, and then their footballing ability was 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 brilliant. Also, um, I think the main man for them at the moment is Barry Goldrick. Um, for anyone that will be watching the game on Sunday, look for look for the small guy at centre forward, and just keep an eye on on his ability. You know, left right, his his passing ability, his scoring ability his ability to be players with solos. And one thing that stands out for a guy who's um who who's not the biggest in the world is is is, is his tackling. It's it's phenomenal. He just he, his technique is excellent. Maybe it's helped by Donny Buckley, I'm not sure, but he his technique, his willingness to work and his 
the amount of turnovers that he gets is is a sight to behold. So they're they're as you meant, you've mentioned you you rhymed off loads of lads there. I think you know, but if you go back to maybe our previous discussion when you talk about the Cairo game, I think the loss of Dara Whelan is going to be a a, a big blow to Clare Galway. Now I know he had his appeal last night. Um, they're hoping that that they will have him, but at the moment we have to we have to take that they that they won't. Um, and his loss will be huge because I would imagine he might, you know, just got straight in on Frankie Burke, who is, is shooting the lights out. That's probably Frankie's probably 34, 35. Um, and not having Dara Whelan, which might mean that Jack Lynn has to go on Frankie, who's going to then go on Damien Comer. So it just, it just leaves him a little bit shy at the back. Um, but they'll be obviously hoping that they will have him, but but he's going to be a big loss if they don't. This is... Clare Galway's fourth year up in senior since winning the Intermediate in, in 2017. They obviously reached the kind of final that year where we were beaten by Michael Glavis from Ross Common. You know, they've kind of struggled to get out of the group stage the last kind of couple of years. And it's a similar story with Anna Down. You actually go back to 2017 as well. They came within a whisker of beating Kurt Finn in the county semi final. And while they got to the semi final again in 2018, they didn't kind of push them as close. They failed to get out of the group stage the last kind of couple of years. You mentioned obviously the likes of Frankie Burke. We know about other established players like Jamie and Comer, Owen Kearns. So kind of a feel that maybe Anna Down haven't kicked on as much as they should have after pushing Curve in so close back in 2017. Yeah, they, they would have been very disappointed that year. I think they missed a penalty um, that, that would have really put them, uh, you can never say in the driving seat against Curve Finn, but it would have put them in a very, very strong position. And they've had a couple of, you know, they've, they've changed managers a couple of times. Uh, Kieran Murphy has come in now and he's really stabilised the ship. And it, it's probably a different and a down team. You know, they've lost the likes of Niall Coleman, who I would imagine they'd still like to have. He's, he's He was just a phenomenal player for Anna Down. Um, Kieran Duggan, who was excellent that year, and we know what he went on and did for Galway the, the, the following year. Um, or have been doing for Galway in 17 as well. The the injury has curtailed his involvement. So they probably haven't kicked on to the level that they would have hoped. But what Anna Down have, and it's what and Clare Galway respected, um, is huge tradition. And they come, I think they won the county county championship in 2000, if I'm not mistaken, 2000, 2001, um, and really came relatively from nowhere unexpectedly won it and bet killer air a strong strong killer air team in the county final so what anna down have is that tradition and they come you know they might be maybe dormant for a year or two uh possibly three years but they'll always come every it's cyclical with anna down they'll always get a team that that will will come along and will test every team that they, they play and they i would imagine um that they're they have high hopes for this Anna Down team and if they don't get over Clare Galway on Sunday, they'll see that as a huge disappointment and they will be saying to themselves, get out of the group and, and they won't fear whoever they get in the quarterfinal and, uh, you know, whoever they get in the quarterfinal, if they were to get out of the group, won't fancy playing Anna Down. Yeah, as I mentioned both these sides so far, they both came quite close to pulling off against Moy Cullen. The kind of feeling is from different match reports and things I kind of heard in Galway Bay FM is they probably left themselves a little bit too much to do in the final quarter. It does make the Moy Cullen versus on Kaharu game a dead rubber, but you mentioned you were at the Clare Galway Moy Cullen game. Do the defending champions, do they still have the look and the sign of champions so far from, the, from what you've seen? Yeah, absolutely. On paper, they've, um, they've by far the strongest panel in Galway. Um, the day against Clare Galway, they'd no Sean Kelly, they'd no Gar Bradshaw, um, and yet they still put out a superbly strong team. Um, they've developed a huge leader. They've had Desi Keneally, but they've now developed a huge leader in Paul Kelly. I think he's he is the most important player for my calling at the moment. He's um, his work rate, his know how on the ball, and his canvas in possession is is um, it's a real plus for them. Um, History says that it's very in a county where a team has dominated like Cara Finn, then I suppose maybe history is it doesn't tell the full picture. But history tells us that it's very difficult to put back to back county championships together. Uh, Chum in the mid 80s did it, and outside of that, no one outside of Cara Finn have, have been able to do it. So, if if my column were to put back to back county championships together, it's a phenomenal achievement and something that Don Kinellan and his team, Paul Clancy as chairman of the club, can be very, very proud of. Um, they they look strong. They look very very good. Um, you know, but 
but but it's all it's still still early days and still all to play for and and they'll know that they'll they've a long road ahead of them yet. Yeah, I remember they won intermediate ball, I think it was twenty fifteen. They were played my own club as well, Michael Gabby's in the Connacht final that year, and I was very impressed with them. And I kind of looked out for their kind of progression over the last couple of years at senior and they have been making kind of steady steady progress. Clear goal we could still yes following that trajectory because their underage has been very strong actually the last couple of years when we played them in 2017 they were viewed as one of the up-and-coming clubs in Galway just looking at some of the other groups uh, in group one it's looking very much likely that St James's and Tume Stairs are going to come out of that group Killed Allen still have a chance um, they'll have to beat St James's in their last game Tume Stairs should take care you'd imagine of cartoon Shamrocks who are pointless their first year up from intermediate so they probably would have embraced the relegation battle group two as well uh, Mo- Moila, Mount, or Mount Bello and Moila, who've been the nearly minute Galway club football strong, looking like one spilled in St. Michael's a battle out for second. And then in Group 4, the old faces themselves, Currafin going strong, two wins from two. And is there kind of a feeling that the, the Bears were poked in Currafin after their surprise defeat by Mount Bello and Moila in the semi final last year? There's a feeling that, that it's a transitional period for Currafin. Um, we know David Morris has, has stepped away a little bit. He's focusing very much on Capitagal and the hurling. Um, and if you look at the team on paper, not as strong as has been over over the past couple of years. No Ian Burke, um, Gary Sice, you know, back the last day, but 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 Gary, same age as myself, he's 37. Uh, we you know Dahi Burke's plans, no, nobody's 100% sure of, but they still have a very strong, you know, around the middle of the pitch, that Dylan McCune out to the middle of the pitch. They're playing uh, Michael Farrer at full back. And I think that's where, similar maybe to the Stephen Cluxton scenario with Dublin, um, maybe people didn't realise the influence that he had on the overall structure of the team until now the fact that he's gone. I think the fact that Kieran Fitzgerald isn't with Curry Finn um, on the playing side of things is a massive, massive loss to them. Um, just the competitiveness that he brings that, narkiness uh, he he brings at times um and just that overall footballing ability is 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 very very difficult to replace uh, but there's still a huge quality lean still Kieran Malloy, Dylan McHugh, Ronan Steed, Martin Farver, Michael Lundy but you know probably won't be as feared as as they have been over the years um and that should leave it as a, a little bit of a more open championship. So going by the sounds of what you've been saying, would you still be back in Curfin or sorry, Mike Cullen even sorry to be number one in Galway again? Yeah, I think the, the safe money would, would be to go with Mike Cullen. Um but I think someone like Tune could have a big say in this yet. Uh, probably, you know, Tommy Carton came in two years ago, did a brilliant job, maybe disappointed a little bit last year, and they'll have regrouped of good forwards, good leadership. Jamie Murphy and Gary O'Donnell are two of the biggest leaders in Galway club football. Um they do it day in, day out. Jamie Jamie Murphy has been, you know, one of the one of the more exceptional footballers in Galway over the last ten years. Um, and as I said, Gary O'Donnell just just drives from that half back line all of the time. And he's good guys up front. So you could you could be looking at a tune. Obviously, Mount Bellu my lap will still fancy their chances. And as I said, Cardiffin, you know, they're four time, five times All Ireland club champions. Uh, rule them off, rule them off at your peril, but. At the moment, I think Mike Cullen are probably in the driving seat, but um, I, I certainly wouldn't say that they're, they're pulling away from the pack by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, true. We were involved in a crazy semi final against Mike Cullen last year. It was very high scoring, entertaining. That could have gone either way. And then we've seen what Mike Cullen done against Mount, Mount Bell, my loss. So, true, definitely. And they probably should have won the count final in 2019. They really had Curve in beaten one injury time, just didn't see it out. So, they definitely would still feel as if they're still knocking on the door. Int- we know that the hurling position is still up for grabs, which we'll talk about maybe in a few minutes. But there's still even a little bit of kind of uncertainty surrounding who's going to be in charge of Galway footballers. Which I don't know for absolute definite whether poor Joyce will be there. This was his second year in charge. Overall, it would be fair to say it was a frustrating year for Galway. Relegation from the league and in such a strong position at half time, the kind of final, and just never showed up in that second half in Crow Park. Yeah, and you have to give me all huge credits to come out and they. Uh... They negated any any real attacking threat that Galway showed in the first half. They brought a level of physicality to us that that Galway couldn't match. Um, hugely, you know, it's frustrating for everybody, and no more so than than for Porik. Um, uh, personally, I can't see him not being there this for the coming campaign. I think that with the nature of how the last two years have run, 
in terms of the COVID situation, I think it'd be very unfair if if um I'd be very unfair if, if he didn't get a third year at it. But he's he's he will know himself he's he's under pressure then and then going into a third year because go go the public will expect a, a bounce from them and I think at the at the least they'll expect to come back up from division one. We'll be looking over the we we'll looking over the wall into our, our neighbours in Mayo and saw you know they went down um 2020 and and bounce straight back up in 2021 and and will be in division one football in 2022 so we'll expect the same um i think park you know and Galway football will have to play a patient game um we'll have to give a chance to the likes of the matthew tierney's and the jack lynn's and the guys at that under 20 team uh to really stake a claim and really get, put their feet on the table in inter-county football because it's a it's a difficult it's a difficult place to sit at any uh, in any year, um, but they have plenty of talent in Shane Walsh, Damien Comer, a guy I think that could be a real leader for Galway is Rob Finnerty up top. I think he has all the ability in the world. Um, he's an out and out corner forward. For me, maybe needs to bring a little bit more scoring into his game. Um, maybe a little bit more selfish at times. He Rob tries to create goals a lot, create scores for other people, but I think at times I think maybe just needs to take the more simple option and. I start and getting a, a few more scores after his name um, at the end of the game, but I think he has he has huge potential and he's a guy that we could really build our, our forward line on as well as Damien Comer and Shane Walsh. Um, so there's loads loads of potential. Uh, it's just a matter of unlocking that. And for me, the man to do it next year is Porik. Will he will he look to maybe bolster his backroom team possibly? Um, but but who knows? But I think that I would be pretty certain that. The man we'll see wearing the banner store bib on the line the first round of the league will be will be that uh, that great goal man Park Joyce. Yeah, one of the things I think that very much stood out from when Park Joyce took over in the end of two thousand nineteen is that he was here to win that Ireland and he would have deemed his time in charge of Galway a failure if he didn't. From the way that you're kind of talking that there is potential in Galway, there's no doubt about it. There's plenty of exciting players. The underage success is there. There's a sense now for the first time probably since two thousand fourteen, Gaelic football is a little bit of a change in face. Why? Dublin are definitely not gone away. There isn't a feeling of inf- inf- or about them. So do you kind of feel that maybe that there is possibility that we could deliver on them words that Port Joyce said? Yeah, I, I think so. You know, Mayo didn't perform in the kind of final or the All Ireland final, maybe maybe overachieved in getting to the All Ireland final. And, and as you say, Dublin, there isn't that sense of invincibility about them. There's still some very, very strong teams out there. Tyrone will will be really by they'll get huge confidence on the back of this win. Um, you know, Kerry obviously with, with a new management team, Jack O'Connor bring a steal to them. So Mayo will always be there. Um and I think you know Dublin will, will rebuild. So it's it's not a case of just saying, well, get our house in order and we we'll go on and win in All Ireland. Like Galway again if we look at history, Galway don't have a history of, of winning All Ireland. You know, we we got a you know an exceptionally talented group of players from that 2000, you know, 98 to 2003, 2004, and we won two All-Irelands. But it's a long time before that since we won an All-Ireland, and it's a long time since that since we've won an All-Ireland. So we have to be realistic as well in, in, in knowing where our place is at the table and knowing that we're going to have to work very, very hard to, to climb the ladder. And, you know, I think once everybody realises that um, and puts their shoulder to the wheel, then with the level of talent that we have there, then anything is possible. But, you know, it's to start with the basics first and, and get get our house in order, get working hard and seeing where that takes you. Yeah, as we said there a little bit earlier, of course, they still don't know who's even going to be on the sideline for the Galway Herders for next year. Michael Dunahoo he looked for certainty as if he was going to come back, but talks broke down. So now, of course, you're a former dual player and won under 21 at Ireland in both codes, actually, in 2005, and you're involved with Turlock Moore, it's you know it's a good boy now since Shane O'Neill has kind of stepped down and there's a similar situation in 19 when Michal Dunning who stepped down that time it took Galway a long time to find a manager. We're now coming into the month of October. It looked like last week Michal Dunning who was certainty as I mentioned talks break down. Where do you kind of see how this is going to go and who would you like to see now fill the void? Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, intercounty management is is. Um... You know, it doesn't just revolve, resolve or require a commitment by the man that's going to take the job. Um, it requires a huge commitment by his family, by his employers. Um, 
you know, we're not, you know, we don't know, we weren't privy to what talks actually did take place, you know, or what talks did break down. So we're not sure of the full story, I suppose. But, you know, it, this is a huge, huge job and an appointment like this should take a little bit of time. Now, probably should have been done a little bit quicker, but maybe maybe they felt that given give to give me a little bit more time might be the right thing to do. Um, now it looks like that that hasn't that hasn't happened, and we're hearing that there's there's two two names in the hat. Now, in fairness, the Galway board, nobody I think is one hundred percent sure who those two names are. Lots of speculation, you know, that Brian Handley, Jeff Linsky, is it Johnny Kelly? Um, but the interviews have taken place, and that there, you know, there will be an announcement next week. But I think. What's disappointing Galway public is is the Michal Dunahu factor one and what he would bring to it. He has, you know, you spoke about that that under twenty one at Ireland in 05. Michal was a selector and then he worked in, in Thurlock Moore for a couple of years and had good success there too. He has a a real, you know, a belief in what he does. He's driven to succeed and and God help you if you stand in his way of success. So he, what he would have done is put a huge uh you know this this word that's bandied about you know a, a high performance environment that everybody speaks about now some some people that speak about it wouldn't know a high performance environment if it struck them in the backside but they would you know he would have put a, a structure in place when he came in in 17 he brought francis ford with him one of the top coaches in the country david hanley one of the the top physios in the country he to a certain extent i think poached lucas from tip uh, one of the best snc coaches in the country so so he pushed he put in place a real uh, top class, a top class management team, and I think we were all really hopeful that we'd see Michal Dunahu, and we were really hopeful that we'd see a top class management ticket. And however hopeful we were at this time last week, we're as equally disappointed this time. This you know t- today or yesterday or uh, when we heard the news. So you know it's it's not it's not an ideal situation for whoever does get the job to have to go into that situation knowing that realistically they weren't they weren't the number one choice by by the Galway pub by the Galway hurling public um and they will be under pressure to deliver a really really top class management team and that's what you know maybe in in bygone years people will look at the manager and judge everything about who was the manager but you know everybody now looks at exactly who who he has involved with him um and his management team and and that's that's going to be the the telling the telling factor of whoever gets this call with job is who can they bring with them and if if it's a Brian Hanley or Jeffrey Linsky if they can bring a top top quality ticket with them then hopefully it'll, it'll be success and uh, who knows two or three years time Michal might might decide that that now is the time for him to come back so uh, it's an evolving situation it needs to be sorted out but I would imagine it'll be it'll be sorted out relatively quickly. Yeah, you mentioned Brian Hanley and Jeffrey Linsky and Johnny Kelly. They're all Galway men. One man you didn't mention who's still being uh, rumoured with the job is Davy Fitzgerald. And I suppose, look, Galway have gone down the route before of outside managers, most recently, likes of Sherlock Nan, John McIntyre. Hasn't kind of quite worked out. Would that be the main reason why there might be fears of Davy Fitzgerald taking over Galway? Or would it be kind of fair to say that maybe the style of play that he's imposed with the likes of Wexford, Clare, whatever, just wouldn't go down well with the Galway public? I think it, if it was um, if David Fitzgerald decided to get them to go ballet dancing and won in All Ireland, we wouldn't really no one would bat an eyelid because we'd have won in All Ireland. And when you go back to when we talk about the footballers, we don't have a history of winning them, and uh, you know that's what makes the achievement in seventeen of Michal Dunno and his team so special. Before that, you got to go back to eighty seven and eighty eight, and 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 those glory days of the eighties. But before that, it was. Was dark enough times in Galway hurling too, so um, success is what's going to be the main driver, and we don't really mind how that happens. I, I think that the main factor is is the fact that David Fitzgerald isn't from Galway. Um, I can't see Galway appointing two outside managers in a row, and it hasn't seemed to work previously. You know, uh, John McIntyre, Gerald Nan, Shane O'Neill, they haven't had huge success, um, and I think that's why it will be a clamour to appoint an inside man. Who might bring you know he might bring a coach with him from a from a different county F- for me a man that would have been you know outside of me who i think matty kinney would have been a a really really good a really really good choice for galway uh, matty has decided to show huge loyalty to dublin and you have to respect him for that but he's a man that knows galway hurling inside out 
Um, and and you know, I I think he, he he would have been a good choice, as I said, outside of me, Hall Um, you know, possibly would 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 Francis Ford or Noel Larkin have gone alone. But we're left we're left with who we're left with now. And as I said, you know, they're going to have to to come up with a really really top class coaching ticket and uh, and and drive this Galway team forward because there is loads of potential. Yeah, obviously we're missing Joe Canning. Um, our Joe Canning has retired and. He's irreplaceable. He'll go down as one of the greats of the game for everything that he does on, on, on the hurling pitch. And we will find it difficult to replace that. But there's still some top, top quality hurlers there and lots of guys coming in, uh, coming up uh, coming up behind them. So um, hopefully exciting days ahead for Galway hurling. But at the moment, it's just a little bit of uh, instability and that needs to be sorted. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't realize I had still had my mic on mute there for a second. But yeah, as you said, they're like probably entering a bit of a transition period as well, Galway Hurling. But you know they're in a good place to do it. They've won four minors in a row, so there's no doubt about it. As you said, there's plenty of talent kind of coming through, and of course, club action very much in the thick of things. They had the second round of group games last weekend. They're involved this year as well with Turlock Moore. Came so close last year, losing the final to St Thomas's. It's been a pretty positive start so far. A draw against Neighbours Clockwell the first day. Good win last week against Castle Gard. Now our victory by a point. Up against a Hasper now the next day who are pointless. So there is a good chance there to get a win there and cement your place into the knockout stages. Yeah, hopefully. And that's, that's I suppose, when we start at the, the start of the year after coming off the back of the, the county final defeat, the main goal was just to, to get back into the knockout stages. So we've 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 left that in our own hands. Um, and that's always important, um, you know, we obviously have to be realistic. We've had a, a huge loss to our team and Sean Lanan when he did his cruise ship for Galway. So we've 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 big boots to fill for Sean, but we've loads of young fellas that are that are more than willing to do that. Um Sean O'Hanlon coming off a Galway minor team is a really exciting prospect. So we've you know no more than Galway hurlers, Turlock Moore is in a really strong position as well. They've won two failures back to back recently and loads of hurlers and, and loads of guys that want to put their hand up and, and play for Turlock Moore. Um, we didn't perform that well against Crawwell. Um, you know, I would say Crawwell maybe would have been disappointed they didn't get the win, but our guys showed real battling qualities. I think we got the four out of the last five scores, and that's a really good sign of a team. Um, and against Castlegar, we didn't didn't have the best of first halves. We were four down at half time, but our guys put the shoulder to the wheel. Um, and yeah, Castlegar had a chance to equalise near the end, but. I think on balance we 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 deserve the win just about, but Casagara a really up and coming team as well, and have some some fine hurlers like Sean Neary and um these guys coming through, Greg Thomas, um so they'll they'll be there thereabouts as well, and it'll be a huge battle between themselves and Crawford. So um, Galway club hurling is is a it's a competitive beast. <laughs> it's not it's not a place for the faint hearted, be it uh, inside the white lines or outside the white lines, and. Uh, uh, you know, we're we're hoping that we'll just be able to to keep going and go as far as we can in the championship, and and who knows that where where that will take us. At the moment, smart money again is probably on St Thomas's. They made a great start to the championship, um, really good win against Saint, against Lee Mellows uh, last weekend, and a really really good win against a well coached Clamour Daly team the the week before that, who 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 drew a cap tagel this weekend. So Kent Burke has taken over St Thomas's. Uh, job his dad did successfully for for so many years Ken is a brilliant hurler himself and um, obviously brother david and and the burke clan so there'll be no lack of, of hurling knowledge in the line for st thomas's and um they look like they're they're you know they're certainly not resting on their laurels and and four in a row is certainly uh certainly in their sights it would be fair to say whoever comes out of Galway this year will probably have to take out st thomas's yeah 100 percent um I think you know they're they're pro- they've won three championships in a row. So I'm not I'm not uh, letting any cat out of the bag to say that they're 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 a really really strong team. And coming up behind them then is probably a bunch of teams like ourselves that is going to need to really perform in every day we go out um, against the teams that are around us. And that's just the that's just the nature of it. And and we're hoping that we can do that. But likewise, the likes of Black Ray and Sarsfields and Gort and Capitagal, you know, they they will also feel that they're in a strong position to to have a go at St Thomas's and uh, 
you know, that leads for a very, very exciting Galway Club Championship that hopefully develops plenty of players for whoever will to be the next Galway senior manager. And please God, we'll have bigger crowds and better competitions and, uh, um, you know, Gal- Galway Hurling can, can benefit from that. But it's difficult, you know, probably discussion for another day, but it's difficult for a lot of the club hurlers. Like, you know, they'll have three club games in four weeks and if they don't get out of the group or they're not in a relegation battle, that's it, you know, and um, so they'll start in September and they'll be finished in October um, and they'll be expected to keep the, the show on the road for until next September. So something that's definitely going to have to be looked at is, the, is uh, how they can keep how they can keep club players um, busy and interested and, and um, that they'll feel part of the, the, GA, the GA calendar. Yeah, of course, also worth remembering well, whatever wins go with this year will have a, a good layoff until the end of January for an Ireland, Ireland club semi final as well, which of course it's just probably a little bit unique this year with the backlog with the late start into the club championship. But just finally before I let you go, uh, Barry, of course, actually are based in Cork. I know obviously you're fairly well tied up and still making the trek up to Galway for your commitment to turn up more. But have you got maybe much of a chance to go and watch any of the club championship in Cork in, in either hurling or football so far? Um, I haven't really and like I'm 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 lucky. It sounds like it's a, a huge trek, but I'm lucky. I, I work for a very good company, um, uh, a pharmaceutical company called Taya Panics, based there in Castlebar, and um, they allow you know I, I cover the country with work, so I can I can work uh, I can work training into to a lot of that sort of stuff. So it's not too bad. But yeah, no, I've, I've kept an eye on the the Car Carlin Championship. Really competitive. Uh, you know, I thought Glen Rovers. We played in the challenge game. I thought they were they were a really good team. They went out and got a, a good trimming in the first in their first in their first championship game. They've come back and in, they've come back into it. Uh, Saint Finbar is a huge talent. Um, you know, the likes of Ben Cunningham, after in the twenty team coming through, Jar Cunningham's son. Um, uh, they they're going to have a huge say in it. Black Rock, obviously, hugely talented as well. And and what I will say, like there's there's from what I can see in Cork hurling and football championship. Uh, there's there's lots of talent out there. Um, I think Kieran Joyce, um, Kieran Joyce from that under twenty team is a guy that they're definitely going to have to look at in 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 Cork. And he and he shoot, he's doing really well in the club championship as well. Um, but it's it's a really coming more than Galway. It's very very competitive. Probably no standout team, you know, like a whatever Newtown Shandrum when they were when they were in their pomp or Portumna and Galway or at the Ryan Galway, you know you. Would you call a winner? Probably, probably not at this stage. But there's three or four very, very strong teams, and uh, um, you know, again, like like the Galway Club Championship, Kieran Kingston, Jerk Cunningham, Christy O'Connor, Jeremy O'Sullivan, they'll be they'll be hoping that this this Cork Club Championship can develop players that can go on and and uh, as I said, put their feet under the table at, at inter county level. Yeah, sounds like even already at this early stage, I know because. The likes of Clare, Waterford, Tipperary, Limerick are all well developed in their club championships. The Munster Club hurling championship this year is going to be an absolute treat. And already at this early stage, even nearly two months before it starts, already just waiting the appetite. Just before we go and wrap up, so just to let you, of course, know that you can, of course, sign up to our Patreon. It's just for five euro a month for all audio content and even more exclusive uh, content. And something that you can do for completely free is subscribe to the YouTube channel by just clicking that button at the bottom of your screen. We're just shy of 9,000 subscribers would be great if we could kind of boost that up and it helps grow the channel as well. Barry, thanks very much for taking the time out and speaking today and hopefully we'll catch up with you between now and Christmas and, and more club talk. Yeah, absolutely. Fair play to you, Thanks a million. Cheers, Barry.